If you're a PC gamer, or have a Steam account, you probably played a game of Team Fortress 2 at some point in time. You know how the class system works. Nine classes total, three that specialize in attack, three that specialize in defense, and three that are designed to support the team. These classes can be used in other situations and what they specialize in, either due to tweaking their loadout or just through pure player skill, and some are more situations than others due to doing poorly in direct combat. However, I've noticed something about this class setup. So today on the drawing board, join me as we take another look at the colorful classes of Team Fortress 2. As I said earlier, TF2 is 9 classes split between attack, defense, and support. However, this class divide actually goes further than the class select screen, with each category of classes is further split between the three main types. How? Let's take a look, shall we? First, we have our resident speed demon, the Scout. Scout is basically the supportive attacker. He runs faster than any other class, has an amazing ability to do his speed and double jump, specializes in ambush attacks, and can capture objectives at twice the normal speed. The majority of scouts and local weapons also play into these categories. With the force of nature's knockback and the back scouts mini crits from behind to add to his ambush nature, weapons like the winger and atomize adding to his mobility, and he has a bunch of weapons like the flying guillotine and sandman to help support his team due to the variety of effects they have such so as stunning or bleeding, and the sudden stick and mad milk practically require you to work with other players to get the most use out of them. He can also make invincible or buff himself in order to serve as a distraction. Next, we have the soldier. Soldier is basically pure attack. He has a large amount of health, his rockets have the highest raw damage and range out of a projectile, and he has decent ability to do his rocket jumping and the majority of unlocks the system in its attacking endeavors. The direct hit gives him a much more damaging and faster rocket, the beggar's bazooka and panic attack are pretty much carpet bombing tools, the escape plan lets him retreat quickly when his health is low, and his banners allow him and his team to fight more effectively. He can even allow his team to get to the battlefield more quickly due to the discipline and reaction, and can attack from above by either floating above the battlefield and raining down rockets with the base jumper airstrike combo, or by goomba stomping foes with the mantreads. Now for my main man Pyro. This mumbling maniac is surprisingly the defensive attacker, as he must ambush opponents in order to have a chance, so Pyros mainly watch the backs of teammates when they're attacking a point. You'll most likely see both teams with at least one Pyro, as his flamethrower is one of the most useful weapons in the game. High damage can instantly reveal cloaked or disguised spies, and his air blast can push enemies back, extinguish burning teammates, and reflect projectiles. A lot of his unlocks also favor ambushing opponents and use in a more defensive situation. The home wrecker removes sappers, the back burner crits from behind, the degrees has a faster weapon switch, and he has a bunch of weapons like the flare gun that deal increased damage to burning opponents. Now for the defenders, starting with our black Scottish Cyclops, the Demoman. Demoman is the offensive defender, if that's even a thing. His grenades bounce off objects and hit enemies around corners and can do a fair amount of damage. He can lock down an area with sticky bomb traps and is the most versatile class in the entire game, being the defending class that adapts the most to defensive play. His weapons also show this, with only one being suited to defense, that being the Scottish Resistance. The rest. Well, let's take a look. The Quickie Bomb launcher arms in seconds and fires faster, making it much more suited to sticky spamming. The Lock and Load and Iron Bomber are the engineer's worst nightmare, and we all know how dangerous his various swords and shields can be in the hands of a skilled Demo Knight. The only classes that the charge ability doesn't really work on are scouts that can jump out of the way, pyros that can blast him back, and heavies that can kill him before he can do anything. Speaking of heavies, this bulky sandwich addicted Russian is purely for defense. He has the highest health and DPS output out of all the classes, while also being the slowest, meaning that heavies are more suited to locking down and defending an area rather than leading the charge in an attack. A lot of the unlockable weapons for the heavy also affect his stopping and staying power, thus improving his defensive ability. The sandwich is a portable health pack, the brass beasts improve damage and range, Nastasha slows down targets, the gloves of running urgently give you a speed boost when deployed, and the fists of steel reduce range damage when active. He can even use the Buffalo Steak Sandwich to turn him into a walking one-punch killing machine, even if it's only really in the game to give the warrior's spirit a use. The last of our defensive classes is the Engineer, and this friendly Texan is a supportive defender, with his building assisting the team in various ways, making him one of the most important classes on the team. 
Sentries provide additional firepower to a defensive line, dispensers heal and restock teammates' ammo, and teleporters allow his team to get to the front lines faster. His unlockable weapons also play into his support of nature and have a common theme of supporting his buildings. The Wrangler allows him to take remote control of his sentry gun, the Jag has a construction boost and faster swing speed, the Rescue Ranger allows him to repair his buildings from a distance, and the Eureka effect allows him to teleport to either his resupply locker or his teleporter exit. He can even be useful on attacking thanks to the Poms and 6000, the Panic Attack, and Frontier Justice slash Gunslinger combo. Finally, we come to the supportive classes, with the first of these being the Medic. Being the only class to self-heal and reliably heal other classes, the Medic is pure support, and shouldn't really be doing anything else. His uber charge ability is useful in almost any situation, and his weapons improve his healing prowess. You can either sap health or uber charge from enemies with a Blute Slogger and Uber Saw, perform long-range healing with the Crusader's Crossbow, or stick to your heal target with a Quick Fix. Some of the weapons also have some other effects, such as the Vitasaur's ability to retain 20% of uber charge upon death, the Vaccinator's ability to grant resistance to a certain damage type, and the Solemn Vow's ability to let you see enemies' health. For our next class, the Sniper, I had trouble deciding just what type of support he's supposed to be, but I came to the conclusion that the Sniper is the defensive support, designed to remain in a specific place and take down any enemies that pass through there. While he does have a few weapons to increase his ability in close quarters like the Bushwhacker, Huntsman and Cleaner's Carbine, most of his weapons increase his sniping and supporting ability, but the Machina's increased damage and the Hitman's Heatmaker's Focus ability all designed to counter his biggest weakness, the Spy, like the infamous Girati, the Razorback to protect from backstabs, and the Tribeman's Shield to cause a bleeding effect. Finally, there's the Spy. Designed to be the attacking support and pick off troublesome targets without detection thanks to his backstab, and he can neutralise the danger of enemy buildings with his sapper, the spy must be stealth in order to be effective, and his disguise and cloak abilities help him do just that. His weapons help in his attacking support and stealthy nature, with the ambassador letting him headshot foes, the enforcer having a damage buff, and the diamondback storing critical hits. For stealth, he has the dead ringer to fake his death, the artillery reward is a silent killer and lets him instantly disguise as the person he backstabs, and the spicicle lets you evade pyro should they ignite you. So, that's every class covered, and what their intended role on the team is. Don't take this video as a way of telling you how the classes should be played, think of it as more of a guide to help out those new to the game and what they should try to do in playing a class for the first time. I'm the Cyber Engineer, and thank you for watching this episode of The Drawing Board.